All right, this is a video to uh, Anna Kanavad. Anna Kanavad. Now I don't know exactly if this name comes from the word Antikavada, but. Um, Here's what Wikipedia says that's all about. <clears throat> Antikantavada is one of the most important and fundamental doctrines of Jainism. <laughs> or is it Jainism? I always forget. Okay, let's see. Jesus, I can no longer read with the, um, okay, I know what I'll do. I'll, um, uh, I'll type in pronounced Jainism. I've already seen in this web search that it says this is wrong, but Merriam Webster has this. Jainism. Jainism, that's what they said. Okay. So back to the main issue here. Antikan Tavada is one of the most important and fundamental doctrines of Jainism. It refers to the principles of pluralism and multiplicity of viewpoints. The notion that truth and reality are perceived differently from diverse points of view and that no single point of view is the complete truth. Well, I mean, um, I believe that too. That sounds a lot like um, skepticism so far all right, Jains contrast all attempts. Oh, it also sounds a lot like this dude on a counter ride. Sounds like something that on a counter ride, um, on a counter ride says. Is he Jainist? Oh my god. Is that, what, is that how that's pronounced? Did I get that right? Okay. <laughs> Jains contrast all attempts to proclaim absolute truth with Adkaja Jahanyanaya. Spelled A D H G A J a N Y A squiggly Y or maybe it's not squiggly, maybe it's straight. Hard to tell. A H. Alright. They believe uh, absolute uh, it proclaims absolute truth with this thing, which can be illustrated through the parable of the blind man and an elephant. Oh, isn't that the one where there's all these guys feeling the, the elephant? Sort of molesting an elephant. Scared elephant. 
elephant. In this story, each uh, of the men does all the thing you used to. Why, why should I read that? Let's see. Let me go fast forward to where it's done. Everybody knows that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Consequently, no single specific human view can claim to represent absolute truth. Okay, I believe that. The best you can do is take a cross-section. Like, for example, with a measuring stick, you can find something's length. Okay, the origins of Anakanavada can be traced back to the teachings of Mahavira. 590 to 527 BCE. The 24th Jain Tirthankara. I have no idea how to pronounce these things, obviously. The dialectical concepts of Siddhavada or conditioned viewpoints and Naya, Naya, Nayavada, partial viewpoints, arose from Anakanavada, providing it with more detailed logical structure and expression. The Sanskrit compound literally means doctrine of non exclusivity or multiple viewpoints. It is roughly translated into English as non absolutism. Well, I believe all that. that that's that this sounds like what uh, Piero no 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 isn't it like this yeah I'm pretty sure Piero of Ellis a town in uh, Greece somewhere went uh, to Pakistan all the way to Pakistan with Alexander got some of these ideas now, I got these kind of ideas uh, from science, or specifically the scientific method. The scientific method. Right? It says you only believe what you can see. <coughs> so. I only believe uh, what I can see, except for you really have all the senses. You know, plus anything at all. You know, if you think about it, including emotions, including the emotions, senses, and so on. Right. Now, what I've been trying to explain to Anakanavad because he uses, you know, he, he acts, he often is trying to tell me these things, like I don't know them, and I'm trying to say yes, you know, assuming that, assuming that, assuming that's true, assuming relativism, right? You know, I asked him if somebody uh, has a dollar. and they drop it onto the ground, onto the sidewalk. And somebody else sees it. It is on the ground. Is it more ethical to uh, give it back? Uh, or to uh, keep it? Uh, he said uh, neither was more nor less. It was indeterminate. How would you determine? And I said, no, you know, 
I said, you know, I said, which do you prefer? Of the two. is more ethical. All right, as far as I can see, he avoided answering that, but he did say that he has a problem with Prussian education. What's that? Is that is that German Jesuits? I think he might have said he was a Catholic. All right. At one point, but not any longer. Okay, no offense intended. That sounds like a value judgment, that Prussian thing. Now, he also asked me, what's it matter what he thinks? It's like, well, because I want to know. I want to see if they overlap. It's like, here's my preferences. Like, I prefer uh, no murder. You know, I prefer uh, more food available, not to eat necessarily, just at, at our beck and call, and so on and so forth. And part of that is disvalue, so, you know, negative negatives, we could call negative negatives, like less murder, you can also call that bad, do the whole set of negatives, whichever, you see that's arbitrary. And here's you, I just assume we're not exactly, but they're there is some overlap, probably. Maybe not. Maybe you're way over here. But whatever. For the sake of arguments, we we check. And I don't presume it, there isn't an overlap. Let's put it that way. Right. And you seem to not want to state where you stand on those things. Now, just because there is no absolute one that's better than the other doesn't mean they don't exist. It doesn't mean it's not important. You, you know, you also are fond of saying things are just a tool, right? Specifically philosophy of any kind, or more generally, let's say, logics of any kind. Because there's many kinds of logic, of course. So philosophy, logic, they're just tools, you said. Right. So tools are just useful, I said. Right. You said, oh, but you can't say, what's useful mean? Well, I said, that's simple. People have to create a criteria, right, for something to be useful in a particular case. Right. You said it's just a tool, so let's say a uh, hammer. What, what is the criteria that might lead to a hammer? I want something, uh, something to hit nails. Right, that, that's sort of pre prepared. You could almost say, and you might, oh, but that's circular. The hammer was made to hit the nail, the nail to be hit by the hammer. Right, but we can still compare two hammers. Two hammers. to see which satisfies that pre-built criteria. So the point is to pre-build some criteria. Now, I, I think ethics is a hard one. It can be done. Because, see, I don't have to create a criteria you agree with. Do I? 
No. I don't have to create a criteria you agree with. Because it's useful for me to have a criteria for my own use. And by my own use, I mean a conscious criteria So I know what I'm doing. So I go in with an open idea of what it's like if I say, hey, I want education to be better. I'm prepared to, to say, you know, what does better mean to me? Right? I'll know that. And I'll be open-minded to that it's going to be something else for someone, for someone else. And I want to know where the overlaps are. Because that's what we're going to have to make an education system out of out of. I don't, hopefully don't have to resort to things over here you disagree with and vice versa. It'd be better if we could make an education system out of this part. Maybe we could do some negotiating to involve some of these. So what does better mean? Well, you know, in education, uh, you know, I believe you can pretty directly have math uh, and uh, science tests, uh, testing. Um, pretty easily. Now, how do you know if people know history and things like that? Well, uh, I think we need to improve testing of those things, right? If, if testing worked on the, my principles of epistemology, it'd be very, very different. But you can test for these kinds of things. Um, I think, uh, well, this video is already 60 minutes, so I won't go into how you can measure that sort of thing. Uh, like what kind of education is better. Let's just say that I'm committed to uh, stating uh, what my criteria is um, explicitly. Right? It has, uh, so, you know, I don't expect to be taken as though I've made a real proposal until I've stated my criteria explicitly, and that's also uh, what I demand. You know, I demand that the, uh, more so even uh, than the goals. You know, it's good to know what people's goals are, but I, I really think uh, all we need to agree on to go forward um, uh, is, um, well, you know, the rules of measurement. That's, that's what we need to agree on. We need to um, all say, well, you know what? If uh, you know per capita income goes up, we'll we'll call that a a good. You know, if uh, if if life expectancy goes up, okay, we'll call that a good. You know, if availability of clean water, like the percentage of people with clean water, um, uh, goes up somewhere then we'll call that a good, um, right? If the, if the, if the um, uh, childbirth rate uh, or let's just say if the pregnancy rate rate stabilizes Uh, that's good. That's good, let's say. Let's say if uh, crime goes down, let's say that's a good, I think. I'm sure some of these we can't agree on, uh, no doubt. <laughs> um, let's say if um, pollutants in the air, which you can measure, and pollutants in the water, if, if that goes down, let's say that's a good. Um, if uh, um, uh, unemployment uh, um, if that goes down then uh, that's good considering that only counts usually people that want to work if you don't want to work you're not unemployed just because you don't have a job um, you know, I think some of these things we might be able to agree on. I know I agree on uh, 
them with certain people and I think it's a cop-out just because there's a lot of views doesn't mean there's no views right there's multiple views now, are they in a perfect balance well one could presume so but if that's the case then the question is where is the center point right yeah there, there might be a geometrical balance a center of this shape so who knows where it is me that's who